and services.
first tip was amazing in its detail. The tipster told police the killer didn't enter Andrade's apartment through the front door or even a window. He entered through an attic crawl space. The tipster knew that Mr. Andrade's laptop was missing, knew about the contents of the laptop, which was never public information. You really have to question, how would somebody know this kind of information? Mike Stan, and on August 18th, you can help strike out cancer at Yankee Stadium. Register today for the Runyon 5K, a unique run walk that uses the stadium as its course. Explore the concourses, the ramps, and the stairs, and take your victory lap around the morning track that circles the field. All proceeds support innovative research funded by Damon Runyon Cancer Research Foundation. To find out more, visit DamonRunyon.org slash Yankee Stadium or call 212-455-0501. At CreditRepair.com, we don't like to brag. Yeah, so 
police, a single mother who lived there with her three-year-old son. When questioned by police, Maria claimed she didn't even know Michael Andrade or where he lived. But investigators didn't believe her, so they took the unusual step of confiscating Maria's vacuum cleaner and the clothes in her hamper. Investigators found a pair of men's jeans, and on those jeans were tiny glass fibers. The small air pockets within the glass had expanded, creating a distinctive football shape. This was fiberglass insulation that had been in or near a fire. The evidence was not destroyed, it was simply charred. This gave it unique properties, something that I can compare back to with any standards that were found at the scene. The charred insulation on these jeans was consistent with the charred insulation found on Michael Andrade's body. The insulation was unique. It was burnt insulation. So it wasn't a situation where the person could say, I've been working at a construction site. That's how I got this insulation on my clothing. Wrapped around the spool of the vacuum cleaner, investigators found highly distinctive thread. Black polyester fibers were wrapped around cotton fibers, then colored with an unusual combination of dyes. This thread was consistent with thread found around Michael's neck. It matched his bed sheet, which had been torn and used as a ligature. Microscopically, it was the pattern that the threads had that were able to give me that distinguishing or that unique appearance that associated with the bedding material. Also in Maria's apartment, investigators found a video camera and keys to a Ford truck. The video contained images of Michael Andrade's family, proof that the camera was Michael's, and the car keys were Michael's too. Michael Andrade's truck was a Ford F-150, and these keys were Ford keys. He went down with the alarm remote on the set of keys and opened up his truck. Investigators confronted Maria Solis and wanted to know who owned the man's jeans found in her hamper. After she was threatened with prosecution, Maria Solis changed her story. She now admitted she had a roommate, 25-year-old Joe Luna. She met Luna over the Internet and seemed to me to be desperate to be in a relationship with a man and uh, latched on to Joe Luna in what I believe was a very uh, manipulative relationship. Maria claimed she knew nothing about Joe Luna's criminal past, that he had served five years in prison for carjacking and aggravated assault on a police officer. And Joe Luna was wanted for a series of home invasions that bore a marked similarity to the Michael Andrade case. He would break in, cut bed sheets up, tie up the people who were at the uh, house with those strips of bed sheets. He terrorized five separate people, three of whom were families with children. He tied them up, he used weapons, he threatened them, he stole from them. Brick Anvik was a victim of one of those home invasions. It's just indescribable. I mean, you, you feel like your home is where you're safe. After the robbery, Forensic evidence the perpetrator had left behind. And we noticed that two cigarette butts were in the garage. Um, we don't smoke, and none of our friends who had been at the house recently smoke. DNA from the saliva on the cigarette butts matched Joe Luna. <laughs> Just five days after Michael Andrade's murder, Joe Luna was arrested and charged with the crime. Did you kill your neighbor? Despite his denials, Joe Luna was 
recognized him. Same, won't we? Let's guess which one died. Joe Lewis, a 53-year-old. 